Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be inspired by Danny Wakely again and this is sort of how I unleash my creative block, so to speak. So, the last few videos you've seen have been me being inspired by Dina Wakely and I'm in the middle of doing the 100 day project and I sort of get into a bit of a slump three quarters of the way through it and I find going back to materials that I love to use and I'm really comfortable with using really helps me get out of that. So for me that's using the Dina Wakely Media materials. Um, I love using them, I'm really familiar using them, uh, I know the colours that I love working with and it just helps me not have to think about all that stuff. I can just focus on what I want to create. I don't need to focus on choosing colours that work together or making sure something doesn't work. I, I know how they all work together. So I'm using working on my large um, Dilutions journal. I have gessoed the page because I wanted to try and get some white space. I'm going in with some Fuchsia, Magenta, Cheddar and Lemon. And I sort of watered it down to get it a bit loose and free, but it kind of all mixed in together. So I'm going back in with some straight paint just so I can get that highlight of the yellows and the oranges. And now I'm going in with my mixed stencil and just rubbing away um, some of the paint just so I get that sort of ghosting effect happening over it. Once I've sort of finished that, I'm going to go in with something that I don't use very often, which is the... Um, dilution um, spray inks and spraying it straight onto the page and dripping it down. Now I love getting drips on my pages um, but I'm not very successful with them sometimes. Just underneath where it did drip onto the glass I'm not wasting it I'm getting in some book pages and um, sponging it up with that to get some cool backgrounds. Now I really liked how it worked but it did sort of fade back into the background and I did get that overspray at the top of the page which really annoyed me because I was trying to keep some white on the page but in the end it worked so it wasn't too much of a hassle. I did decide to go in with my wet wipe and rub some of that um, excess ink away because I wanted to sort of continue on that pattern that I had in the background. So just to intensify the colour, I did put some more sprays of ink on, just a little bit lower down on the page, um, so you could see that contrast. So I'm sort of sticking with analogous colours, sort of the, the pinks, reds, oranges on the page. And now I'm going in with a stencil from Flutterby Designs. Both of these stencils, or word stencils, are from Flutterby Designs. And I'm going in with white paint to stencil with, which is something that I've started doing recently. I've never really done it much before and I really love the effect. Again, particularly for me because I don't keep that white sp space in my background very often. And um, by stenciling in white, it started gives your eye somewhere to rest. So I decided because I was in a bit of a creative funk, I wanted to do something about art and creativity. So I've got this Art Is stencil on one side and um, this stencil, she unleashed her creative spirit on the other page. And you can see that I haven't made it really stark white. I have sponged it out enough that it is very soft in the background, which I really loved. Now this page, again, like the um, last few that have been um, on my channel, have been inspired by Dina Wakeley and they've been particularly inspired by the Dina Wakeley um, Art Journal with Courage page, a book, sorry, that she released a few years ago. And this is a page that was in her journal. It's not created faithfully step by step, but it's just sort of taking some of the elements I really loved from that page and combining them together. And um, I'm really in love with this botanical stencil at the moment. I didn't buy it for a long stage, and I don't know why I popped it into my my cart to begin with, because it really isn't something I would use very often. But I just adore it, and I think this doing this page with it really cemented why I loved it so much. Um, so I'm just going in. One of the things that... Um, Dina sort of said it in the book or did in the book was to do some gel printing. Now at this stage she didn't have her own gel press and she actually just gel printed on some um, packaging paper. She just put some 
paint out on that in a circle and, and gel print it on that. I was I had this large um, gel printing circle, um, but I wanted I actually wanted some smaller circles, and it just I couldn't work out how to do it. So I was going to gel print this up and then try and print it through um, the circle stencil I had from Scrap FX but it didn't quite come together the way I wanted it to. And when I printed it out on the page, it was very light, but again, it was very um, serendipitous because it, it actually worked really well in the end on how I wanted it to work. So I'm just using this um, leaf stencil again to get out a pattern onto the gel print. And this one was slightly darker. Um, but it still was very light. It wasn't that big pop of blue that I really wanted. So I decided that, that wasn't particularly working for me. So I'm just cleaning off onto a scrap piece of paper and I needed to think of a plan B of what I wanted to do. This is one of my use it up journals or my junk journal um, that I was um, putting the extra paint into. So now I've decided that I was going to use a circle stencil that I had. And I was just going to go in with some of the straight paint and stencil over it just to get a brighter bit of blue on the page but I left that soft edge and I'm really glad that I did that because it gave some interest to the page and made it look a little bit more deliberate um, for having that background but because I'm stenciling it really softly I can still see all that stuff coming up in the background and the great thing I found about stenciling and white in the background is it kind of acts like a resist you can still see what's going on in the background but it blends it in a little bit. So this is a really handy stencil to have with all the different circles on it and it just did what I wanted it to do on the page. It just gave that little bit of brightness by overlaying the circle stencil on the already gel printed stencil it just deepened that blue a little bit and now I'm going in with the leftover white paint because I didn't want to leave it and going over those circles to put some more pattern in it. So it's basically a back to front way of gel printing something I suppose. It's the way to do it if you don't have one. Um, but it worked really well on this page. And by putting that little bit of white back in, again, it just sort of blends it all into the page. So it's really, really important, I think, to, to look at your page and if it's not working, try something new or something different. And by using some of the colors you stenciled in the background, in your foreground, it just ties everything together. So now I'm going in with some darker paint and this is actually Payne's Grey, not a black and I think on this page it's really really important it's not a black. I don't think a black would have worked effectively on this page. And I'm just going in and getting these sort of leafy bits in my foreground in the darker colour. Now as I was doing it I was thinking have I ruined it by putting the dark over it but I got really carried away with it because I really liked it. You can see here I'm sort of overlaying them over the top. Where I'm going over them you can kind of see where the, the stenciling has been in the background but that's okay. And just to balance it up I'm putting some on the other page as well. I didn't want to put it the whole way across because I think that would have been too much. Um, but just sort of putting in little bits and pieces here and there. So once I'd finished this, um, I really liked it, but I decided that um, I've been watching a lot of Inky Quill videos recently, and one of the things that she does a lot is um, draws over her stenciling, particularly black stenciling, with a white pen. So I decided I was going to try it with this, um, and I think this is what really sold this page for me. So I'm just going over really, really scratchy, not being very careful, going over a few times to get really, really sketchy lines. And you can see immediately by putting that white over the top, it's actually knocked back the colour. It's made it less stark on the page and it made it sort of belong to the page a little bit more. It also kind of ties in with the fact that you're sort of talking about being creative and stuff. So by actually drawing over the top of it, it just helps that out a little bit. Now I do know that um, Dina Wakely does sell a stamp set that I think matches this stencil set. You can actually stamp over it and it matches and it sort of 
um, scribbly lines like this. I don't have that stamp set. Um, if you didn't want to draw on it yourself, you could certainly do that. But this is just so simple and the messier the better really. I'm not staying within the lines and I'm making sure that I go over it a few times. Because I really loved how that looked, I'm going around my circles now with the white pen as well just to again put those really scratchy lines on it um, to, to make it look like it's been hand drawn. The final thing once I'd done all this was I decided that I wanted to pop out that quote in the background. And I was going to match it up and I think I do, no I don't, I actually offset it and I do it deliberately. Um, so it doesn't, um, that it's, it is actually separate, the, the stenciling in the background is purely for background purposes. And one of the reasons I did this was because I wanted to sort of Frankenstein this quote a little bit. So I didn't want to use the whole quote, I just wanted to use a little part of it. I wanted to make sure that it still read together properly. Now if you're really concerned about um, stenciling where you didn't want to, you could put a little bit of washi tape there to um, make sure that any paint doesn't go through. And now I'm just going in and drying it off. So the finished quote was, she unleashed her creativity and with paint everywhere her heart was happy and her soul was flying, which is what happens when I paint and certainly on this page um, it was just one of those pages where everything came together really and I was just getting happier and happier and happier as it went together and I just couldn't wait to share it um, so it's a bit devastating that the video is going to take so long to come out because I did this a few months ago now when the video will be coming out but I'm really glad the video has come out eventually because it's just such a beautiful piece and I'm really happy I could share it. Um, so I'm going in with the paint pen and highlighting the letters just again to pop it out and I because I found the white worked and everywhere else on my page I knew it would probably work with the stenciling as well. Um, when I shadow my letters, I always do it on the left and on the bottom. Um, by doing that consistently every time, it makes it just a little bit easier. I don't need to think about where I need to put the shadows. I can just do it and it works. You don't have the odd letter where it's on the opposite page. So if you've got a bit of a rhythm, it doesn't matter where you put the shadowing, um, just as long as you put it in the same place every time. So this is the final piece and um, how it all came together. So. It is inspired by the um, Dina Wakeley Collage uh, Art Journal Courage book. So you can certainly check that out. It's a beautiful book and it's a great way of getting out of a funk. Um, and yeah, once I'd done this page, I was definitely over my art journaling little bit that I was in. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye for now.